Okay. So welcome everybody to Connecticut Community College's showcase, uh, the Alumni Avenue Q&A. And this afternoon we have three alums. We have Robin Avant from Housatonic Community College. We have uh, Naja Drew Davis from Tungsis Community College. And we have Devin Harris from Quinnebog Valley Community College. And I'm Sarah Hendrick, Associate Director of Admissions for QVCC. And uh, Sarah Vincent, is from Manchester Community College, and she is the Director of Strategic Enrollment Management. And she's gonna be popping back on to help manage the chat in case anybody online has any questions. And uh, with that, we'll get started. And um, I just want everybody to introduce themselves, give a little background about where you're from, uh, what you did at your community college, what you're doing now, and then we'll get on with the questions. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robin Avant. Um, Housatonic Community College, academic dean currently, and um, I actually started at Housatonic as a student um, in the biotechnology and clinical laboratory science degree program. I transferred uh, after graduation to Central Connecticut State University for the biomolecular science program, and then uh, took advantage of tuition reimbursement through an employer, uh, a biotech employer, Roche Pharmaceuticals, where I was a associate manufacturing reagent. So I worked on reagents that are uh, a part of genome sequencing with DNA, RNA, and protein. And um, because of the tuition reimbursement, I went back to Central and I earned the master's in biomolecular science. I then started to adjunct at Housatonic uh, on Sundays, actually, that's when we were open on Sundays, teaching biology, intro to biology. And I actually saw myself, I always said, that Monday coming, I believe that I'll be here full time. And so a position opened up and I applied and it was a faculty role. And so I started full time faculty uh, in the biology program and then really just climbed the hoops, went through you know all channels and, and really moved up into the leadership role as academic dean. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Robin. Naja, do you wanna go and introduce yourself? Yes, so good afternoon. My name is Naja, and I attended Tungsis Community College for two years, and I got an associate's in communication. After that, I then transferred to Eastern Connecticut State University, where I received my bachelor's in communication, and I uh, did a minor in film studies so that I could be a producer and director in film one day, soon, hopefully. <laughs> um, currently, I've graduated uh, this past fall, 2020. I'm a social media manager for a company called Cool Nerds. I social media manage their podcast. I am also a production assistant for a film company in New Britain called Paradigm Academy. And I am also a lead student mentor for a student 5.0 CT learning program uh, in collaboration with Gateway Community College. Thanks, Naja. And lastly, we have Devin. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Sarah said, my name is Devin. Um, I reside in Killingly, Connecticut. Was a, an, I'm an alumni of Killingly High School. Uh, straight out of high school, I joined Quinnebog Valley Community College, where I got my associate's degree um, in business administration. And then from there, I used the ABLE program to transfer directly to Nichols College um, and finish my academic career and get my BSBA in finance. Um, and then straight out of Nichols, I joined a firm called Barnum Financial Group, uh, where I am a financial advisor. Thanks, Devin. So um, the first question I'm going to ask is, can you talk about what made you select community college in the first place? And Devin, since you're right there, do you want to start with that one? Yeah, so like I said, um, I was in high school, I was a senior, and it became time to start looking at colleges. Um, I looked at some private universities, but they really turned me off just because of the tuition cost, um, being you know financially minded, if you will. Um, that sixty thousand dollar a year price tag just definitely was not for me. So um, Sarah herself, she came to the high school and told us about Quinnebog Valley Community College. Um, I always saw it down the road, just living in Killingly. Um, I always wondered what it was, so I started to look into it um, and just completely fell in love with it. Um, they offered you know the degree that I wanted to at pretty much the right price. So. It was a no brainer for me. Thanks, Devin. Who wants to go next? Naja, do you I want to take 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my mom, uh, she used to be the director of admissions at Tunks's. And so she convinced me or made me go to <laughs> Tunks's Community College because she told me I would save a lot of money going to community college, even though I really wanted to go to a university. And so even though I dragged my feet to go at first, I absolutely love that I ended up going to Tunks's Community College because that's where I met so many of my friends. Um, the community of going to a community college uh, is just amazing. It's small, uh, you know everybody's face, and you're a big fish. What did I say before? Big fish in a small pond. I hope I'm not saying the saying wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> and you have resources at your fingertips. So that's why I ended up going to community college, and I saved so much money. Wonderful. Thanks. Uh, my story is just a, a touch different. I, I was ready. I was packed. I had my flights um, for Chaminade University of Honolulu for the forensic science program. Um, I actually even knew my roommates. I had a little trinket for them and my mom got scared. She was extremely nervous with uh, not just the distance, but more of the financial aspect. And in case there was ever emergency, how do I get you home? Uh, how do I really fund this degree? And um, so, you know, I echo that the community college aspect is when we say less expensive, but with all the right resources, all the right academic opportunities. Um, and so for me, I was still very goal driven, uh, wanted to, to, to be a part of education as a whole, um, believed in receiving a degree. And so although it felt like it was ripped from me um, going to that dream school. Um, I made it a point to locate that that community college and enter in. And the moment I entered in, I fell in love with Housatonic. And um, it was not even an option from there. I wanted to be there. I wanted to stay engaged uh, and stay committed. And so that's how I found Housatonic Community College. Thanks for sharing, Robin. Robin, since you're right there, can you uh, maybe touch on the next question? Um, can you explain a connection to a faculty or staff member who made an impact on you, perhaps a mentor that maybe you felt supported by, and help, how they helped you with your academic path or even non-academic? Absolutely. And um, again, not to age anything or anyone, um, you know, um, including myself, but Marilyn Weir. Uh, she is currently at Housatonic Community College in uh, Accessibilities now. Uh, but she was a part of counseling, wellness, mentorship, um, uh, the co-op programs. And um, once I found her, she found me. It was just such a support buddy, right? I mean, in all types of aspects, um, almost like a family relationship, a, a mentor relationship, a career advisor. And uh, Marilyn really helped me in all walks of life, um, developing me. Uh, also, the big piece for me is she connected me with Mad Science of Fairfield County. Um, my name was Reactive Robin, and you know, entering into classrooms K through 12, summer camps, uh, birthday parties, you know, blowing up things and and uh, sublimation of dry ice. So it was awesome. Um, but you know, her connections, her passion, um, really were so supportive to just every endeavor that I had. Thanks, Robin. Who's next? Nazja, do you want to go next? Yes. Okay. Uh, so a person who was really inspirational to me was my professor, Carrie Ann Beckford, and she was also the advisor that, um, or yeah, the advisor for the club I was part of, um, Students of Color Alliance. Uh, coming to that school, she just gave me, she was just a light. She was funny, she was charismatic, but she also played no games. So she was that structure uh, that I really needed coming in as a freshman, lost and confused. Uh, so she was a professor for two of my classes that I took there. And it was just so nice to meet someone who could relate to me about my passion for writing. And she was very patient. Uh, she wanted you to do your best. She wanted you to pass the class with an A. So she was going to put all of her effort into making sure you pass that class. <laughs> and then her being the advisor of Students of Color Alliance for me 
was just very inspirational for me. It helped me uh, having her presence there helped me reach out to other people and then um, become the vice president of that club eventually. Thanks, Naja. Your turn, Devin. Yeah, so for me, like I said earlier, there's so, so many great people I'm sure that we all can talk about, but um, one person that stands out to me the most is Amanda Giles. Um, at the time she was working in the student, basically advisory service center. Um, and basically I found her through my second semester um, at QVCC. I really wanted to get involved in the community. So I decided to apply for student government and she was the advisor for student government. So obviously I had to go to her to, um, you know, get all the paperwork and my signatures and everything. Um, and basically from the first moment I talked to her, she just opened her arms up to me. Anything that I needed um, was spent pretty much the whole next two years with her, had that mentor relationship with her. And she was one that really drove me to, you know, get involved and push myself to the limit. So I have a lot to thank uh, for her. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. And I know you're very involved at QB in a lot of different activities. So that's wonderful. Um, how about this? Can you share? Um, Talk about academic supports. If anybody used any academic supports that were available to them while they were um, at their community college and how that, how you found that beneficial while you were working towards your associate's degree. Devin, do you wanna start since you're right yeah, in line there? Course. Got the perfect example. So um, I was struggling with the class um, of statistics at the time. I'm sure we've all struggled with one class or another at some point, um, but statistical, statistics was that tough one for me. Um, me and a couple other people. So um, we have the the learning center is basically a tutoring center at QV. Um, and I used to go there every single day before class um, for about an hour and get tutoring. Um, and they were there every single time. What, whatever I needed, whatever questions I had, they would answer um, and, you know, give me the support I needed. And then that basically turned into me passing the class with, with a great grade that I needed. So I have a lot to thank for them in the learning center. And I know that a lot of other students use them as well, so. Definitely a good resource for anyone that's struggling or just needs a little extra help anytime, right? So that's perfect. Um, Robin, did you wanna to touch on this one? Sure, thanks. Um, you know, um, I always look at academic support, even though the title is for us at Housatonic, very driven to tutoring uh, and the tutoring center. Um, I also see academic support as a structure or um, other resources that are student service driven. And um, at that time as a student, um, my mom and dad uh, alive, uh, you know, well, but not involved, not deeply um, involved in my academic journey as a whole. And um, so I actually shared uh, very similar stories to a lot of our urban uh, Housatonic students where uh, homelessness was one of my issues. And um, it was something that was there that could potentially cripple me. Um, but, you know, the services provided through Housatonic, I felt and I found um, such resources that kept me secure, uh, kept me safe, um, and really provided me so much more in, in that, um, that life struggle. And so um, I, I remember, you know, kind of almost sleeping sometimes here, waking up, eating, then doing work and then, you know, heading off. Um, I took over an hour in just walking from uh, the location that I was at. I always walked along the, you know, the path of the bus. But interestingly, the bus never came during those um, those days of walking. Um, and so but really those wraparound critical, critical supports that are structured in really all of our campuses, um, I found a very good need and, and I utilize them. It's really helpful. Thank Thanks, you. Robin. Naja, would you like to add to this question? Yes, so I struggled with organization and similarly with Devin's experience with the class, my learning lesson kind of occurred to me when I was taking a African American history class and I did terrible because it was my own fault <laughs> because I was late turning in my paper and that was my learning lesson. I was like, oh, I would never want this to happen again. So I decided to become organized and 
I started using my resources that the school was giving me for free. Well, actually, you're paying for it, so you should use every resource. But I started going to the academic support center as much as possible uh, to meet with a tutor to help me with my papers. I started using the library as a resource because at the library, um, the librarians will, you just give them your topic. And in most cases, you give them your topic that you're doing and they will find books and they will find quotes within those books for you to plug into your paper. And I realized being organized was actually made life a lot easier. <laughs> so just use your resources. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I just want to make sure I say we have more. Um, more participants right now. So I just want to open it up and just say, if anybody at all has any type of question, please just enter it in the chat box. And Sarah Vincent, who's my partner in crime from Manchester Community College, um, Director of Strategic Enrollment there, she's going to help monitor the chat. So if I don't notice it, she will notice it. So please, if anyone has a question for our panelists, just stick that in the chat. But and my next question is related to involvement at the community college. and. All 12 of our community colleges have strong student government associations, uh, a myriad of clubs and activities that students can get involved in. Can all of you talk about some of your experiences with involvement? And I know Devin touched on it a little bit already, but if, if all of you wanna talk about how you got involved and how that impacted your experience as a student. Naja, you're right there, so you can start if you want. Yeah, so, um, the club, the first club that I got involved with uh, seriously at Tonksis was the Students of Color Alliance Club, um, and then I became the vice president of that club eventually. Um, forcing myself to be in a position like that and allowed me to take organization a little bit more seriously. It forced me to be more open with people. I've always been very talkative. But sometimes I find myself being reserved, like, you know, all college freshmen. So it really forced me to, to learn about other people, be open to other people, and not judge those people because they, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different struggles. And eventually, those skills that I developed in that club helped me in the future when I transferred to my state college. I put myself in more leadership positions. Um, I then decided that I wanted to be an RA at Eastern um, and I wanted to be a part of more clubs there. So um, get involved. It really does teach you a lot and it's a once in a lifetime experience. It's a great piece of advice. Who wants to go next, Devin or Robin? I can go. Okay. So just so, want to open by saying when I was in high school, I was not a very involved person. I mean, I did sports, but when it came to, I'd say like community service and the requirements that we had to do, it was kind of just something I always put on the back burner. Um, but I always had that itch to get involved in the community as a whole. So when I went to QV again, um, wanted to get involved. So best way to do that, I thought was to join the student government, um, which I touched on earlier. Um, and through the student government are basically our, our, the job is to get the community of students involved with one another um, and help basically enhance their experience at the college. So we held several events um, such as like Bogstock, which was a music festival um, open to the community and their families, which was great because you not only got to meet your classmates, but you got to meet the people that they went home to every day. Um, we also did during Election times, we did um, speed date the candidates where we invited, um, you know, local candidates to come and meet the students, um, which was great. Again, enhancing their experience and getting them involved in what politics is, um, and just speaking their voice in an appropriate manner, which I think is important nowadays. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, just the skills I developed through that, again, like Naja said, just developing teamwork and organization um, is something that, you know, trickled down to when I went to Nichols and especially where I am today as a financial advisor and the team that I work with. So um, great, great experiences. Thanks, Devin. Uh, so for, for me, I have uh, two items to share. So the Black Student Union, BSU, um, where I found myself um, entering into that fairly early in the academic journey. Um, and I think it was for connection building uh, to really feel like you belong 
um, like you have um, other individuals, either similar or different, but really making sure that you learn of others um, and, and find friendship um, and bonding. And so um, I took a secretary role because um, I felt like I wanted to be a part of that leadership board um, and grow through that. And um, of course, like Naja said, it's that organizational skill. And so it really, it empowers you um, and it really grows you um, for your future endeavors. Um, and as a biology student, I took advantage of the research, um, summer research experiences, as well as a mini winter research experience. So I went to Brookhaven uh, National Laboratory, as well as uh, Clark University in Potsdam, uh, New York. And um, really, it was an eight week program, um, ended up having a stipend, but doing a lot of research and meeting new people from all, all areas um, who had the opportunity to apply and be accepted. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. So this is a little bit um, different spin of a question, but did any of you, while you were attending um, your community college, did you face any type of challenge, whether it was you know personal, academic, and how did you, how were you able to overcome that? Um, were there supports at the school that helped you or you know, faculty, mentors, that type of thing that helped you get through that? Robin, you wanna start? Sure, um, you know, and I shared a challenge a little earlier, um, but aside from that on an academic side, I came from the Stanford Public Schools and um, at that time, the math was only called business core math. And they moved away from the typical algebra, um, trigonometry, you know, the, the real um, kind of cornerstone map that truly is a part of what we need for the future. Um, and that core math um, actually, Devin, it made me sound in statistics, okay? But I <laughs> lacked some of these other um, formula-based, right? Critical uh, skills that were necessary. Um, and so I found tutoring, my tutoring services to be uh, wonderful. But what I I learned is I met one specific tutor and from that point on, I didn't want anyone else. And so even though he was employed and then stopped being employed and then kind of back and forth, we were able to continue um, to meet at Sacred Heart, at Housatonic, at all different areas, um, public places that allow me to continue to meet with somebody that I really learned how to learn from uh, and best to learn with. And um, he kept me going through all the math, which is uh, critical as a STEM major. Um, but I made sure that I mastered it and I fell in love with it, kept on going through pre-calc and calculus eventually. Perfect, thank you. Naja, do you, Naja or Devin, do you have something you wanna to add to that question or answer? Um, I can kind of go off of what Robin was saying. Um, a challenge of mine that I found. Um, summer classes. I don't know if anyone has taken summer classes um, at a community college, but or at a college. That was just such a gigantic challenge for me because you have four to five weeks to complete the class, and you're doing a semester's worth of work within that short time. So I was taking this biology class and this summer class, two different sessions, um, but I was just so exhausted because I was there at the school from 9.30 to three. It was like a full-time job. And so again, I'm gonna stress organization because that's how you're gonna overcome anything, organization and time management. Uh, I just had to organize my schedule accordingly. Uh, your summer classes, you're just going to have to set out certain times of the night when you're going to do that homework. And sometimes it turns into all night. But um, and organize your organize your work. It's, it's sometimes you're just not going to be able to hang out with your friends during the summer if you're taking a summer class. But time management and organization is going to be key to getting through uh, summer classes. So that was a gigantic challenge for me. Well, Naja, I can see why you're such a good mentor to all those mentees you work with at Gateway because you have some good good advice for all those students. So thank you for sharing. Devin, did you have anything you wanted to add to that one? Yeah, just briefly. Um, big thing for me, I guess my biggest challenge was I went to public school my whole life and you always had those professors and those counselors that were just hounding on you if your grades were slipping. When you go to college, I don't want to say 
nobody cares because people at QV, they do care. However, it's, it's really on you to get your work done and when you're going get to get it done, um, especially if you're working. So biggest challenge for me was kind of had free range. I mean, you didn't have classes all day. You're 18 years old. It's the summer. You want to go outside. But um, thankfully, I had those mentors like we were talking about earlier um, at QV who would stay on top of you. Your professors would check up on you. Um, not saying I had bad grades, but um, it was definitely. Uh, <laughs> Thanks <laughs> it was for definitely, clarifying that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was my biggest challenge for sure. Okay. Thanks. That's great. Thanks for sharing. So um, how about this? All, all of you transition to a four-year college or university. Can you give a little bit of insight into how that transfer process worked for you, how your credits transferred, maybe even if you want to touch on differences or similarities, whatever you feel that's important to share. Devin, do you want to start since you're yes, front and center? Like yeah. <laughs> so like I talked about earlier, um, got my associate's degree at QV. Um, then my senior, well, I'd say end of my sophomore year, um, it came time for me to start looking at those four-year universities. Um, and again, touching on it, the financial side of things, I was really conscious about um, picking the right school for me. Um, regardless of where I looked, whether it was private or a public institution, none of them would have turned my credits down if I applied, which was fantastic. Um, but for me, I looked at Central Connecticut State University seemed like the right fit for me. Um, and then within the last couple of weeks before graduation, I found out about the Nichols ABLE program, um, went and visited Nichols and just completely fell in love with it. Um, it was almost like another QV just down the road in Dudley, um, small classrooms, great tight knit environment. Um, so I applied there and they took every single one of my credits. Um, I had to redo one public speaking class, but they still gave me credit for the one I did at QV, which was great. Um, and another good part about it, they gave me reduced tuition. Um, and I'll tell you that all the friends I had at Nichols, and I told them I went to community college, and this is how much I was paying a semester. They were like, what? You're paying that much? I should have did that. So <laughs> I, like I had a little bit of a leg up on them, which was great. Yeah, huge cost savings, right? From like 35 to about 12,000 a year. So that's that's excellent. All right, who's next? Naja, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I can go next. So um, when I transferred uh, to Eastern, I did something called the TAP program, which the community colleges offer, where you can basically transfer all of your credits as long as it's within the TAP program to any Connecticut State College. So I had all 60 credits transferred to Eastern, and then I just finished my two years from there. And I'll say the TAP program makes the onboarding process very, very simple. All you have to do is uh, fill out the form that you're transferring over there, and then you're automatically accepted, and you meet with an advisor at that college, and they help you pick out your classes, and you just choose uh, if you're living on campus, and that's all from there. Um, and like I talked about in the earlier session, the emotional, um, the emotional part of transferring colleges is very different uh, because when you transfer and you're a junior, everybody has made their friends already. So it kind of feels lonely to be in this unknown environment where everybody already knows each other. So just put yourself out there, attend events if you can, if your roommates are willing to talk to you, sometimes roommates don't like to talk. My roommates did not talk to each other. They all hated each other. Uh, <laughs> drama before I started. But uh, talk to your roommates, uh, mingle, go to club events, go to school events, uh, do whatever you can. Um, I found that when I transferred after applying to be an RA, that's what really helped me make friends. So. RAs aren't always the stick in the mud. We're fun too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Naja. Robin, do you want to share your experience? Sure. And as academic dean, I want to encourage students to get their degree. So before transferring, graduate with your associates, then transfer. And I believe in that firmly um, versus just you know transferring and not having the degree. Uh, because anything can always happen. Um, you, you can travel, you can move away, you can um, have a, a, a crisis. Anything can happen, and it's critical to have that credential. 
uh, before transferring. So I do encourage uh, students to truly graduate first, grab that diploma, and then transfer. And so at Housatonic, I received the Associates of Science, and I, it was about 71 credits worth at that time. And so that's why that transfer pathway, um, as Naja spoke on, the TAP program is fundamental because it's a, a real 60 credit and it makes sure that you don't do too many over, you know, or under in credit worth. But it was 71 credits at that time. And when I transferred to Central, it was seamless. They picked up 69 credits worth. And so two of the internships uh, just didn't uh, qualify as a credit worth. Um, but it was still a seamless process and um, started right as a junior. Wonderful. You all have shared so many um, wonderful advice, pieces of advice for any student that's listening or just anyone else that's listening too. So instead of asking that question, I'm going to ask you if you can each share um, one of your favorite experiences from your community college time. Do you want to go first, Robin, since you're right here? Sure. I think, um, you know, it's really everything. I entered in. Um, with a mindset of, I didn't want this. And I'm telling you, just meeting the people, meaning faculty, staff, students, uh, feeling the experience, looking at every resource and pulling on those resources, utilizing the resources, I, that whole frown, you know, upside down changed, right? I mean, the experience alone, I didn't want to leave, um, you know? So I think that's why I'm here as a, a dean, right? I think it's just, I'm captured. And um, Housatonic had so much to offer. Community colleges have so much to offer. And um, I think so it was an overall experience as a whole that really kept me connected and, and feeling comfortable and confident in who I will become or now became. Well, I, I, don't, I haven't known you for very long, but I'm sure that everyone at Housatonic is so happy to have you back. So thank you. Thank <laughs> You're you so welcome. Nasha, do you want to go next? Yeah, so my favorite part was just the community at a community college, like Robin talked about. I became a student worker while I was at uh, Tonkasis, and I loved it. Uh, I was like, this is so much fun to work with the staff uh, and develop all these uh, develop relationships and learn the ins and outs of community college. I really appreciate it, and I didn't take that experience for granted. Um, just the small community made me feel very warm and welcoming and welcome, excuse me, and there's no other feeling like it. So, and it's really where I met some of my best college friends uh, today. I talk to them all the time. One of them I talk to every week and we hate people. So I'm like, why are we always talking? But that's besides the point. <laughs> but really that's where, you know, it's just home. It feels like home. Well, we know you like to talk nausea, so that makes sense. So. <laughs> Devin, do you have a favorite experience that you want to share? Yeah, again, there, there's tons of them, but one that specifically stands out um, is this event called Bogstock. It's kind of a play on words between Quinnabog and Woodstock, like the music festival. So it was a music festival that student government put on um, essentially for the students in the community. Um, my favorite part about it were that we were just student government, a bunch of college kids that had this idea to have a music festival. Um, and we had the support of the faculty and staff to make it happen. And it was a fairly large event and it took a lot of planning. Um, and just the fact that we were able to communicate, keep organization and get all the tasks done that we needed to um, as a college as a whole um, for basically the betterment of the community. Um, again, people's families came and it was a great way to just connect with everybody on a, on a different level um, than just seeing them in the classroom. I have to I have to echo that it was a great event and I used to bring my kids so it's a lot of fun. Um, so we're kind of nearing the end of our session, but I just wanted to see if anybody that's um, tuning in right now has any question. And if you do, please put it in the chat and I'm sure our panelists would be happy to answer your question. And if not, we thank you for listening and um, just thank you so much again for sharing the afternoon with me and with everybody that's listening and hearing about all your stories. It's very inspiring. And I'm sure any students that are listening are also inspired and um, hopefully you'll take the leap and uh, 
fill out an application and work with the admissions people and work with the advisors and let us help you get enrolled. Because uh, it's true, community colleges are a great place to start. Um, you'll find a wonderful community, friendships, you'll find your niche, and you'll find a lot of faculty and staff that are here to support you on your, on your journey um, to get your degree or certificate or anything that you're trying to do at community college. So thank you so much, everybody, again. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful, have a run over rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.